Great North Woods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at FoxBangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, 400 wildfires have already burned 200 acres of Maine this year, and experts say the risk is increasing. Plus, with the election right around the corner, many Mainers have not received their mail-in ballots and are beginning to worry. And Ellsworth is exploring paid parking, which is quickly becoming a contentious issue in the area. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. Those are just a few of the stories we'll bring to you over the next hour. But first, a check of the forecast. And I think it's time to break out the heavy jacket. Yeah. The heavy winter coat anyway. Heading off to work this morning. It was down into the teens here in the Bangor area. And that boy, makes sense. Could, it felt like it. You can feel it in your bones. Yeah, it's yeah. freezing. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. We have a small crowd advisory that has been issued along the coast and now will last until about 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon because of active surf that will be expected thanks to gusty winds. Meanwhile, this morning, we're looking nice and calm out there with just a few passing clouds. I haven't seen much fog reported this morning. Keep an eye out for that just in case some of that does develop. But we, all, we are watching for some active weather further off towards the west showers and storms over in parts of lower Michigan and some activity up in parts of Canada. We'll have our return for rain coming up later on tonight. But future cast moving forward again. We're going to be watching for a party cloudy sky later on today. Rain moves in coming up later on tonight and even as we head towards parts of early Wednesday morning. As for the winds, not too bad. Relatively at about five to ten miles per hour today. They pick up a little bit more along the coast later on tonight, and especially as we head towards Wednesday morning. So for today, not bad. We have lower 50s, party cloudy, and that south breeze getting up to about five miles per hour or so. Later on tonight, rain moves in. Areas of dense fog also expected with lows in the upper 30s and that south breeze at about five to 10 miles per hour. As we head towards tomorrow, middle 50s, rain showers on the way, also breezy. South wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a partly cloudy sky for the afternoon with temperatures warming into the 50s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. We'll see you later on. Well, according to the Maine Forest Service, consistently dry and windy conditions across Maine have brought increased risks for wildfires. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with a forest ranger to learn more and what to know in order to prevent forest fires. This year, we've seen about 400 wildfires. Uh, then they've burned about 200 acres. Timothy Chelman is a forest ranger with the Maine Forest Service. He says the perfect conditions for fire weather or weather that increases the risk of wildfires by making it easier for them to ignite and spread has been building for a while now. And as of Monday, 10 of Maine's 12 districts on the wildfire danger report were listed at high risk with two districts in southern Maine being at very high risk. The big thing is the dryness right now. People don't think as much with about wildfire when the temperatures are so low because it feels cold. But the lack of rain that we've had and the wind that has been drying out the fuels, if you go out in the field, you're feeling the leaves, you notice just how dry and crunchy they are. Chelman says many wildfires are accidental, usually caused by people not paying attention to their fire or not being aware of severe conditions. Uh, for the average citizen, what I want you to do is make sure that you are being extra careful with anything that might cause a wildfire. If you are looking to do some burning of brush piles or anything like that, uh, I would recommend and we would definitely suggest to postpone that until fire conditions are a little bit better. But it's not just burning that can cause wildfires. Cars, ATVs, and even lawnmowers all have the potential of accidental ignition. We also had one recently for equipment use. So someone was mowing their lawn and it caught some rocks that caused sparks and next thing you know, the field caught on fire. Chelman says if you're planning to burn, you should always check mainfireweather.org and when in doubt, contact your local fire department. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The jury selection process has begun for the murder trial of a Madison man accused of killing his former roommate. 62-year-old Roland Flood is charged with the murder for the death of 57-year-old Mark Tribu of Anson. Tribu was found dead with multiple stab wounds at a Madison cemetery back in July of last year. Monday's jury questionnaire process is the first step in the jury selection process. Opening statements are now expected to begin at Somerset County Superior Court on Wednesday morning. 
Well, meanwhile, a state representative wanted for an alleged assault has turned himself in. An arrest warrant had been issued over the weekend for Republican Representative Lucas Lanigan of Springfield. Authorities had been looking for Lanigan following an incident on Friday. He's accused of domestic violence, aggravated assault. Lanigan turned himself in at the York County Jail on Monday morning. He's currently running for re-election against Democrat Patricia Kidder. The Penobscot County Sheriff's Office is investigating the theft of an expensive trailer. It was on Friday, October 18th, when the 53-foot reefer trailer was reported stolen from the parking lot of the Dysart Service Station in Herman. They believe it had been taken sometime in the previous month. Authorities hope to hear from anyone who knows about the theft or the current location of the trailer. You can contact the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office with any information that can help. Well, now to vote 2024 and new concerns with mail-in ballots. A Scarborough viewer reached out to our media partners, WGME. She said her ballot never arrived, despite her requesting one weeks ago. Val Myers started asking questions and learned others are in the same situation and just can't wait any longer. I'm here to polish off my vote. Glenn Grant wanted to cast his town ballot by mail. But the ballot has never come which says something about our mail service. Scarborough officials say other voters have reported the same problem, and some ballots were returned to the town as undeliverable, despite being addressed correctly. They've even received a few completed ballots from South Portland voters. We are working very closely with management at the Postal Service to identify and remediate any problems. We reached out to the Postal Service for comment, but a spokesperson didn't respond. We've certainly heard more concerns about mail delays. I know that where my mother resides, that sometimes we will not receive mail for maybe five days. Um, which is quite remarkable. Catherine Wise was picking up a ballot for her mom and planning to bring it back herself. She decided to vote by mail in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They have a very good system so I can go online and I can see that it's been received. Maine also has an online tracker. If you've already sent out your ballot but it hasn't been received, you can go vote in person. Should the completed ballot show up later, it won't be counted. Yeah, yes. It's not easy when you have to take and make an extra trip. Secretary of State Shanabello says if you can, put it in a drop box outside your city or town hall or return it in person. That's going to reduce the load on the Postal Service and also guarantee that your absentee ballot is returned. And that was Mal Meyer reporting. Mainers without health or dental insurance can apply for coverage through the state's insurance marketplace starting Friday. Open enrollment for CoverMe.gov runs from November 1st through January 15th. You must enroll by December 15th for coverage to start January 1st. This is the only time of the year you can enroll in coverage through CoverMe.gov unless you qualify for a special enrollment because of a qualifying event, such as losing insurance, having a baby, or a change in marital status. Maine residents without access to dental or health insurance enough, or excuse me, through their employer, Maine Care or Medicare are encouraged to apply. Well, a coalition of organizations gathered in Bangor on Monday to introduce the Maine Energy Choice Campaign. The coalition has already reached out to all of the candidates running for the Maine State Legislature and U.S. Congress, urging them to support Maine residents in their choices to heat their homes and businesses. Over the course of this campaign, we have asked candidates for the Maine Legislature and the United States Congress to sign an Energy Choice Pledge, which simply says that they will oppose any efforts to restrict Mainers' abilities to choose how they heat their homes, their businesses, or what kind of vehicles that they drive. Well, in a recent digital research poll, it was found 8 out of 10 voters believe the state government should allow Mainers to choose how they heat their homes. Maine is getting nearly $133 million for bridge replacements in Penobscot and Kennebec counties. An announcement sent out by Senator Susan Collins yesterday said the funding will assist in the rehabilitation or replacement of six bridges on Interstate 395 between Bangor and Brewer. It will also help with the replacement of six aging overpasses on I-95 near Augusta. The funding is coming from the U.S. Department of Transportation's Bridge Investment Program. 
In the announcement, Senator Collins said, quote, this funding will always make our roadways safer and more resilient by addressing bridges that are crucial to Maine's infrastructure. Upgrading these routes will ensure that vital corridors remain accessible for residents, businesses, and commercial transport alike. Well, drivers in Augusta will see some major delays with a bridge replacement project that began on Monday. According to Devin Eaton, the project manager for the Maine Department of Transportation, the closures are part of a construction project to replace the 70-year-old bridge on Western Avenue that connects to Interstate 95. The first part of the closure closed the eastbound on-ramp. It's about 70 years old, um, coming to the end of its service life, gets a lot of traffic above and below it. Um, so we're looking to stay ahead of this project so it doesn't become an issue where it can't handle the traffic loadings that go through here. Well, Eaton adds that following this closure, the southbound exit 109B ramp will be closed on November 18th. He says these closures are only temporary as the contractors put in a temporary bridge there. Eaton expects that the new permanent bridge will be finished by the fall of 2025. A lot of construction going on out there on Maine roadways. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, the time now 611 coming up next on Good Morning Maine in what is quickly becoming a contentious issue for local residents and businesses. Ellsworth is considering putting in paid parking around town. We'll have the story coming up, but first another check of that weather forecast. Today looks like a partly cloudy day with highs near 50 degrees. Tonight, rain moves in. We may see some fog as well. The lows dropping down to the upper 30s. Tomorrow, a rainy and breezy day on the way with highs near 55. We'll be right back. Things are messed up in Maine. The state's broke, light bills are skyrocketing, housing costs are through the roof. I'm Trey Stewart. Here are the facts. Democrats completely control Augusta. They could solve these problems today. Instead, they're focused on how big your campfire can be and banning coyote hunting. You know we can do better. It's time to vote them out. Paid for by Maine Senate Republicans, Augusta, Maine. Top fundraiser of Maine Senate Republicans is RSLC. He used to be good. He pretended to be good on our Second Amendment. We have homeless veterans on the street, and Jared Golden wants to make sure our immigrants have free housing. We're supposed to get 150 new migrants in Bangor. Jared Golden voted to give illegal immigrants welfare, and he voted to let them use welfare benefits on liquor and bail. Mainers are getting screwed. Jared Golden is good at saying one thing and doing something else. He's expert at it. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Oversharing can be weird. How you doing, buddy? I'm more excited than a mosquito flying into a nudist colony. <laughs> <laughs> Weekdays at 9 on ABC7. On Jeopardy, you're in smart company. Two PhDs, a medical doctor, an optometrist, double masters. I'm a double masters, too. They hit the books, but will they hit it big? Next Jeopardy, only on ABC7. The Maine Second Congressional District Forum, tonight at 10 on ABC7. City of Ellsworth is considering a proposal to add seasonal parking kiosks to downtown. This has stirred up a lot of opinions from both locals and business owners who have gone years without paying to park. Our Grace Blanchard has the details. Because there are times, especially in the summer, when we have so many visitors here that parking is hard to find parking. Free parking could be going away in downtown Ellsworth, at least for part of the year. In their latest finance committee meeting, the city manager and deputy police chief presented a proposal that would implement paid parking from May to October 31st. Their projections say it would produce over one million in revenue per year. Any funds generated would be reinvested back into the downtown uh, areas. The city has been without meters since the 1960s, something many local businesses and residents hope doesn't change. Are they going to pull in quickly and have to like go find the meter? right, go figure it out, or are they just going to go, eh, you know, and keep going? Some are worried about becoming too much like other tourist areas. I feel like uh, paid parking may be a great thing for Bar Harbor and other communities, but it's not right for here. That uniqueness may go away when you kind of start to add things like parking meters. It kind of has a different feel to it. Others think this could be a good thing depending on where the revenue goes. I do believe that the money generated as long as it's spent on downtown could really be a boon for the town. 
Both the city manager and deputy chief were unavailable for further comment. The communications director offered this statement and says they hope to include all business owners in upcoming discussions. In Ellsworth, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, it is the 50th anniversary of the Community Development Block Grant. The city of Belfast hosted a celebration on Monday afternoon. Department of Economic and Community Development Commissioner Heather Johnson says Belfast was the perfect location. Belfast has really seen kind of a revitalization and they had a plan for what they wanted to see and were able to use this as a tool to help, again, facilitate some of their work. We really want Belfast to be an even better community than it already is and we have needs to improve our infrastructure, support our businesses, help foster the development of housing and the CDBG program has been really a very important funding source for that. Johnson says in the 50 years since it began, community development block grants have provided more than $603 million for projects in communities all around the state of Maine. There's been a change of command at the Margaret Chase Smith Library in Skowhegan. After 12 years, Dr. David Richards will be stepping down and moving into that director position will be Dr. Chris O'Brien. Our Doug Banks sat down with a, for a conversation with the new director. She was this fundamentally important person in the history of Maine and in all sorts of ways in the history of the United States. These photos, medals, mementos are all moments engraved in time. Margaret Chase Smith and her library eternalized perseverance and hope. That drive, that ambition followed her throughout her life. In September, Dr. Chris O'Brien, a former University of Maine of Farmington history professor and former director of the Theodore Roosevelt Center, began his tenure as director of the Margaret Chase Smith Library after Dr. David Richards retired from his post after 12 years. O'Brien describes this Skowhegan Library as a perpetual work of art. The good news about a museum is that um, what we're hiding in the basement is way more than we could ever show up here. So things will always change. There's always something new to bring up. On Monday night, a hail and farewell event will be held to thank Dr. Richards and welcome Dr. O'Brien. It is a event that thanks him and says welcome to me as well, I suppose, but that's less important to me than to recognize the legacy of all of the good work that he did. O'Brien says he'll continue to follow the moral compass set by the woman whose library was built outside her very own front door. One of the most important things that I think that she did when she agreed to the building of the library and museum was to say that it must be nonpartisan. It must be above the partisan fray. So we are. We remain that way. Uh, it is incredibly important to us that everybody is welcome here. She saw that as inviting people into her home, and we try to carry that forward. In Skowhegan, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Really is an amazing place. They bring lots of school kids there throughout the year to come and see some of the things that Margaret Chase Smith did over her career. She was a, an amazing woman if you think about what she did while on the job, but if you meet her in person, she was just as nice as could be too. Yeah, a so, really good role model. Yeah. All right, the time now is 618 after the break. With temperatures dropping rapidly, winter is right around the corner, and that means Sugarloaf is going to be open for skiing season soon enough. We'll take a look at how they're getting ready as Good Morning Maine continues. So, what's Oprah excited to share with you? Okay, people, can you say deals and steals on my favorite things? This week, only on Good Morning America. Let's do this. There is a store that is all about toys, where you will find that special and unique toy at Out on a Whimsy, Maine's largest toy store. A magical toy wonderland filled with fun and imagination for every child. Now with three locations, Belfast, Bangor, and Blue Hill. Yeah, you know, I'd like to kick back. Skip work, just like no show. No show off to Terrio. But I can't, because when Terrio did show up, he voted against lowering my prescription costs. Now Terrio's running for Congress bankrolled by the Project 2025 crowd, whose plan lets drug makers charge whatever they want and threatens to privatize Medicare. Shows me all I need to know about Terrio. HMP is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message. 
I think Austin Terrio can be very dangerous. He most definitely would join the extremists in Congress. Austin Terrio is on the same side as the extremists who want to have a national abortion ban. The extremists that don't allow women to have choice. And these extremists, they're going to try to control women. It's wrong. I think you're going to see women die. I just don't want that for my grandchildren. Austin Terrio, he's not going to stand up for my rights in Congress. Welcome back, everyone. Well, depending on where you were on Monday, some of you felt some real signs of winter coming, and that's good news to some of us who enjoy the snow. Special thanks to our friends at Sugarloaf Mountain for sharing their Bullwinkles webcam with us. They tell us that the crew started this last weekend with the snowmaking, and it is sure looking like it's sticking to the ground already. Great news for the skiers and snowboarders out there who can't wait to get up there to tear up the slopes. Is that wind or is that just, just what it looks like when they're making the snow? Yeah, they're making it and the wind's carrying away the little snow crystals and right. actually helps them spread around there. It looks really cold. It's beautiful though. Yeah, it is pretty. You have to admit that. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm not quite ready for the cold myself, but no. whether I'm ready or not, it's on the way. In fact, it's already here. Pretty cold out there this morning. Yeah, just give it a few days though. It's going to be mid 70s come Thursday, I'll, which I'll is crazy. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. A small crowd advisory is up until 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon along the coast as active surf will be expected to move in yet again. For now, it's rather calm out there in the ocean. One foot wave heights being reported according toward the buoys at this time. A little bit active further out towards sea around two to six foot wave heights being reported in those areas. Meanwhile, on land, not looking too bad. We're under a partly cloudy sky this morning. A little bit more active weather developing further off towards the west. We have showers and storms in lower Michigan and some active weather in Canada as well. well. We'll have our turn for some rain coming up later on tonight. So future cash showing that partly cloudy sky that will be on the way for us today. And later on tonight, more clouds move in. The rain gets going after midnight. Early Wednesday morning, we'll be watching for showers that will be passing through, continuing throughout the day on Wednesday. Notice by Wednesday night, things do back off. Then once we head towards your Thursday, not looking too bad. Maybe some fog to watch out for and maybe some clouds as we head towards Thursday morning. As for the rainfall, I'm going to stop this by early Thursday morning. Not a whole lot of rain expected, maybe around a tenth of an inch of rain possible before we're all finished up. And then later on this week, a little bit more on the way. So overall this week, maybe around a quarter to a half an inch of rain possible. We'll take any rain that we can get as it's been dry lately around here with moderate drought developing across our neck of the woods. And it's not just us as well. Further off towards the west, look at this. Most of the country dealing with some kind of drought right now. We could use the precipitation at least for us, we'll get a little bit moving in coming up soon. Our average high temperature is 53 degrees. We'll do lower 50s today, middle 50s Wednesday, middle 70s. Hello, as we head towards your Thursday, upper 60s for your Friday. Then we cool off. We got 40s Saturday and 50s Sunday and again for your Monday. So for today, lower 50s under a party county sky and that south breeze getting up to about five miles per hour or so. Later on tonight, upper 30s rain likely. Areas of dense fog also expected and at south breeze at about five to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, we have middle 50s for the high temperature. Some rain showers on the way. Also breezy and a south wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast all decked out for Halloween coming up soon, showing a party county sky and rather warm for Halloween with highs in the mid 70s. Some more rain showers Friday with highs in the upper 60s. And then we cool off upper 40s for Saturday under a mostly sunny sky. I'm a registered nurse. I work in labor and delivery, women's health care. There are a million ways a pregnancy can go wrong. Austin Terrio said that overturning Roe v. Wade was the right thing to do. Terrio wants to let politicians ban all abortions, even in Maine, with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. Terrio says that's the right approach. And that's why we have to say no to Austin Terrio. HMP is responsible for the content of this ad. As a working mom with two little kids, it's hard when Jared leaves every week to go to Washington. But my daddy likes to help you. That's why he joined the Marines after 9-11. Jared will keep us safe. He knows what matters to Maine families. He wants to put more money in your piggy bank. He's protecting Maine jobs and lowering health care costs for seniors and families. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message, because the things that matter most to your family matter most to our family, too.
class-leading safety features at every turn. A Hyundai Tucson. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 1.99% APR or up to $1,250 bonus cash. See your local Bangor Hyundai dealer. It's another exciting year of high school football in the state of Maine. Get out and support your home team and be looking for the ABC7 Sports Blitz crew. You can get a free Sports Blitz t-shirt. Then watch Sports Blitz during ABC7 News at 11 every Friday night during the football season. Blitz shirts courtesy of Clifton General Store, Collector's Choice Sports Cards, Eddington Store, Generations Boutique and Art Studio, Gifford Electric, Main Collision Center, and Pet Care by Lindsay. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. The United Nations is demanding more international attention for what it calls the forgotten crisis in Sudan. Over a year and a half of war in the African nation has pushed the country to the brink of famine. The UN says more than a half of Sudan's population, about 25.6 million people, may face acute hunger this year. Additionally, the country is in the midst of several disease outbreaks, including cholera. We went to Sudan because this is one of the most acute crises that we're facing globally, and yet it's a forgotten crisis. 13 million Sudanese are facing acute levels of food insecurity, of which nine are in either emergency or catastrophic levels of food insecurity. Uh, almost four million children are, are suffering from uh, acute malnutrition, which is a form of malnutrition that if not treated can result in their death from disease and hunger. Uh, and we need to do everything to reach uh, children and their families throughout uh, uh, Sudan. The most recent appeal from the director of the Children's Agency, UNICEF, comes amid recent reports that the paramilitary group Rapid Support Forces rampaged through villages and towns in an east-central province, killing dozens. Fighting between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese military have forced millions to flee their homes. Well, meanwhile, Israeli fighting continues on several fronts. The Lebanon port city of Tyre, group blasted by Israel, going after Hezbollah as tough fighting continues in southern Lebanon. Strikes in the traditionally safe areas in Lebanon, where many displaced families have fled, are raising fears among local residents. In northern Gaza, early this morning, the IDF says it completed raids on a main hospital, claiming to capture 100 Hamas suspects there and killing 34 civilians, more than half being women and children. And last night, the Israeli parliament voting to ban the UN agency, which helps provide aid to Palestinians, claiming UN staffers were involved in terror activities. The UN says this move could mean the collapse of the aid process. Carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere have hit a new high. A new UN weather report says carbon dioxide concentrations have risen by 11.4% in just 20 years. The report warned there are signs that rising temperatures are driving dangerous, quote, feedbacks that will increase greenhouse gas concentrations. CO2 concentrations are now 51% higher than pre-industrial era levels. Climate scientists warn that the burning of fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas is a main factor in climate change. They say the expansion of fossil fuels must end if the world is trying to meet the 2015 Paris target of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Well, it's a swing state blitz with just over a week to go before Election Day. Vice President Harris held events in Michigan while former President Trump traveled to Georgia. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has more. Either it's Donald Trump sitting in there, stewing over his enemies list, or me, with your help, working for you, checking off my to-do list. Vice President Kamala Harris made stops in Michigan, trying to highlight the differences between her and former President Trump. Harris was joined by her running mate, Governor Tim Walz, and big name surrogates rallied on her behalf in Pennsylvania. Barack Obama was joined by Bruce Springsteen and John Legend. Former President Trump held a rally in Atlanta. This election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of incompetence and failure or 
whether or not we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, campaigned in Racine. First Lady Jill Biden and Gwen Walls spoke at an event focused on educators, while Democratic lawmakers Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez teamed up at a rally in Madison. The Trump-Vance campaign is still trying to fight off criticism over jokes a comedian made at its New York City rally, calling Puerto Rico a, quote, floating island of garbage. It's just unacceptable. The campaign says the joke was made in poor taste and doesn't reflect Trump's views. Next, Vice President Harris plans to deliver a major speech in Washington, D.C., making her campaign's closing arguments on the ellipse, the site of former President Trump's speech before the January 6th riot at the Capitol. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. And coming up on the second half of the newscast, what started as a means of keeping old rope out of the landfill has developed into an amazing new style of art. We'll take a good look at it as your Good Morning Maine program continues. This intrigued me a little more into the engine side of things. And being able to be hands-on at all times makes it the funnest. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reactions, and analysis of your favorite teams. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz is brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 30 locations, owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. I'm a registered nurse. I work in labor and delivery, women's health care. There are a million ways a pregnancy can go wrong. Austin Terrio said that overturning Roe v. Wade was the right thing to do. Terrio wants to let politicians ban all abortions, even in Maine, with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. Terrio says that's the right approach. And that's why we have to say no to Austin Terrio. HMP is responsible for the content of this ad. It's in the smallest details. The answer, how is Husqvarna chainsaw durable and at the same time lightweight? And how can a XP chainsaw from Husqvarna help you work both faster and safer? It's in all those small engineered details. Husqvarna, ready when you are. Visit your local Husqvarna dealer or go to Husqvarna.com for more information. I chose WCCC because I heard good things about what they had to offer. It was just a big variety of things I learned in this program. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Tuesday, October 29th, 2024, and it is also... Oh, I'm fighting a sneeze here. Excuse oh, no. me. I think my mic caught me earlier, Did it? too. Okay. A lot of sniffles going on. I know. It's also National Cat Day. This holiday was created to raise awareness about the number of cats that need to be rescued every year. Science Magazine reports that cat domestication goes back 12,000 years. Sailors also brought them aboard ships to help control rodents allowing them to spread across the world. Although many modern cats have comfortable homes, there are still many living in shelters or on the streets. This is a day to consider the many animals that need help. You know, last year I adopted a cat around this time and mm -hmm. I had pushed, I had gone over a year or two without a cat and I had been thinking about wanting to get one and I just realized, oh, I think it's time. And my, I've just been thinking about it and it's like, wow, my life is so much better yeah. when I have a little buddy. I agree with you. I think we got our cats about the same time. Yeah. I have my little dude now. In fact, I just moved into He's a house. He's such a dude, too. He's such a That's dude. His name. Yeah, if you know him, his name, his name is Dude. <laughs> um, but we're now, I'm living in a house, a few too many cats, if you ask me. <laughs> but I have, there's four cats there. I'm sharing a house with somebody right now. 
And uh, so I wake up in the morning at three and I have four little kitties waiting for me there too. In some ways, You're it's, like Snow White. It's, it's awesome. I'm always getting lots of love, but um, did I mention there's two dogs there too? Right. I mean, oh my goodness, right. it's like an animal yeah. menagerie there. But That's awesome. Yeah. This is a day to think about all those kitties that don't have nice homes. There's yeah. a lot of out there on the streets. Right. There's um, groups like Forgotten Felines of Maine. They go around and help some of these, um, yep. these cats. Sometimes they just feed them. Sometimes they try to find homes for them. If you don't have room in your own house, maybe you can Consider if you're yeah. able, make a small donation to a local shelter today. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, let's get to history. On this day in history, back in 1863, the International Committee of the Red Cross was formed. When 18 countries gathered in Geneva, the concept was approved to help improve medical services for those who were wounded on the battlefields in Europe. Of course, the Red Cross is now all around the world, and they help people in natural disasters, fires. It's an essential organization. I don't really know what is. we would do without them. Yeah, just just gathering blood supplies. Yeah. You know, it goes on and on. Yeah. All right, in 1929, a day known as Black Tuesday struck Wall Street as panicked investors made millions of trades in a single day. Thousands of investors lost everything when the market collapsed, leading to the Great Depression. In 1940, a blindfolded Secretary of War drew the first number from a glass bowl in America's first peacetime military draft. With World War II raging overseas, the U.S. wanted all men between the ages of 21 and 45 to register. The following year, in 1941, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Congress amended the order requiring able-bodied men ages 18 to 64 to sign up for military service. Ended up being mostly 18 and 19-year-olds heading over there, though, right. to fight the actual war. Yep. And a much nicer note, in 1945, the first ballpoint pens to be made commercially available went on sale in a New York department store for $12.50. In 1960, boxer Muhammad Ali won his first professional fight. In 1969, the U.S. Supreme Court ordered an immediate end to all school segregation. And in 1998, nearly four decades after becoming the first American to orbit Earth, Senator John Glenn returned to space. He was launched as a payload specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery at the age of 77. And in 2012, Hurricane Sandy slammed ashore in New Jersey and slowly devastated coastal communities. Millions were left without power, and the superstorm caused at least 182 deaths. And in 2015, China announced plans to abolish its one-child policy, allowing families to have two children for the first time in more than 35 years. Imagine living in a country where they tell you how many kids you can have. Yeah, you know. I can't imagine. All right, well, for birthdays today, they include actress Winona Ryder, who is 53 years old today. Singer and TV host Randy Jackson from the Jacksons is 68. And actor Richard Dreyfuss is 77 years old today. Dreyfus has been in so many wonderful movies, just a fantastic actor. Yeah. Winona's back on the big screen, too. Wasn't she in the latest Beetlejuice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's been doing stuff um, again, kind of since Stranger Things. Yeah, good yeah. for her. That's right. I forgot she was in Stranger Things, right. too. Yeah, she's so, a big star. Yeah. Hey, as far as the weather's concerned, it looks like today will be kind of the quiet before the rain. But don't worry, right, be, right beyond the rain, it looks like things are going to be warming up, if I can get my mouth to talk here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It still feels like a Monday. <laughs> Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. We have a small crab advisory that has been issued along the coast and now will last until about 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon because of active surf that will be expected thanks to gusty winds. Meanwhile, this morning, we're looking nice and calm out there with just a few passing clouds. I haven't seen much fog reported this morning. Keep an eye out for that just in case some of that does develop. But we, all, we are watching for some active weather further off towards the west showers and storms over in parts of lower Michigan and some activity up in parts to Canada. We'll have our return for rain coming up later on tonight. But futurecast moving forward again, we're going to be watching for a party cloudy sky later on today. Rain moves in coming up later on tonight and even as we head towards parts of early Wednesday morning. As for the winds, not too bad. Relatively at about 5 to 10 miles per hour today. They pick up a little bit more along the coast later on tonight and especially as we head towards Wednesday morning. So for today, not bad. We have lower 50s, party cloudy and 
that south breeze getting up to about five miles per hour or so. Later on tonight, rain moves in. Areas of dense fog also expected with lows in the upper 30s and that south breeze at about five to 10 miles per hour. As we head towards tomorrow, middle 50s, rain showers on the way, also breezy. South wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing a partly cloudy sky for the afternoon with temperatures warming into the 50s. Your full five day forecast is coming up. Thank right, you, th Devin. Thank you, Devin. What she said. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on now. An Appleton resident is uncovering a new art form. Our Jody Hersey shows us just how this artist works to unravel the beauty of worn fishing equipment into colorful pieces of wall art. Eric Darling is hard at work in his garage in Appleton, creating a new piece of art using discarded lobster rope. I didn't think moving to a, an area would influence my art until it happened. For 30 years, Darling's art consisted of oil paintings and photography. When he moved to Maine, he found a new medium when he came across an abundant supply of used rope along Maine's coast. So I just keep gathering as much as I can. And in the process, I've realized how much is going into our landfills. And so my, my mission statement was to draw awareness to the rope as an art medium and hopefully keep as much out of the uh, waste stream as possible. So Darling started what he calls his drift rope project. He begins by organizing his stash of rope by color. Next, he makes a sketch before turning his drawing into a one of a kind piece. But it tends to evolve as, as I go, just because of the nature of the rope and how thick the lines are. Darling's work is available in Knox County, and now folks in Penobscot County will get to see it for themselves during the Maine Harvest Festival here at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor in November. It really has been like an art with a mission to keep recycling and reusing. Turning trash into treasure, one rope at a time. In Appleton, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. I love it. Great idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun when somebody can take recycling and art and yeah. make it into something unique. Yeah. All right, right after the break, Tyler Cruz will have our sports updates. Don't go away. They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, they are correct. Especially when it's the irresistible steak, egg, and cheese bagel sandwich. Get yours today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Harris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquist region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. Maine's premier community radio station, Star 97.7. Broadcasting loud and clear on our new tower. 50,000 watts of smooth rock and roll with Paul and Sonny in the morning. And Mike Dow in the afternoon. Star 97.7. If you've been in an accident with a truck, making the wrong call can be costly. Evidence and witnesses can disappear. You need to stop that from happening. These are some of the most complicated cases for a law firm but not if you call one that handles truck cases every day. Call a law firm with the resources, experience, and power to go after every dollar you deserve. If you're hurt in a truck accident, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Tell them you mean business. If you have to ask why it's important to start your day early, here's your answer. Get any size iced coffee in any flavor for just $1.29 during breakfast hours. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The main 2nd Congressional District Forum, tonight at 10 on ABC7. Don't miss Jeopardy! Weeknights at 7.30 right here on ABC7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start on the football field. It is a big week for the UMaine Black Bears. Maine falling on the road to number 15, Rhode Island, 24-14 last Saturday, but the game was tied at 14 in the fourth quarter. The Black Bears now back to 500 on the season, falling to 4-4, four and four, and they look ahead to a historic matchup, heading to Oklahoma to take on the Sooners in an SEC game. For Oklahoma standards, it's a disappointing year for them, but it's still going to be a great challenge for Maine and one that they're approaching with open arms. We're going to go compete. That's one of our values as a team. And um, 
yeah, that's our mindset is like, got to have a great week of practice. Um, and then, you know, got to do a great job in how we conduct ourselves throughout the week, uh, taking care of our bodies and then go down there and just, you know, let it rip and, uh, and play football and compete and, you know, an opportunity to compete uh, in one of the best conferences in the country. That game kicks off at 2.30 from Norman, Oklahoma, and you can watch it on the SEC Network. Staying with the Black Bears and moving on to hockey now, a good weekend for Maine hockey, but despite not losing, they fall in the national polls. Maine moves down just one spot in the polls to seventh in the nation, according to U.S. College Hockey Online. The Black Bears got that monkey off their back, winning their first game in Matthews Arena in 14 tries, taking down Northeastern 4-1 last Friday. They skated to a tie on Saturday before winning the conference point in a shootout later on. Now at 4-0-1 on the season, they are back in action Friday at Boston College. And it is playoff time for our high school teams. Tuesday is a huge day for girls soccer. All of our northern quarterfinals matchups will play. Let's check out that schedule. In Class A, Skowhegan heads to Bangor. Brewer heads to Brunswick. Camden Hills will host Mount Blue. And, Mount, and Hamden plays Mount Ararat. Madomic Valley is the top seed. In Class B, they host Gardner. John Babst heads to Winslow. Herman will host Ellsworth. And Presque Isle travels to Erskine Academy. Mount View will head to top seed Fort Kent in Class C. Central and Matanawcook will battle at Central. Foxcroft welcomes MCI. Bucksport will host Orono. In Class D, Bangor Christian won their prelim Friday. They play Ashland. Fort Fairfield heads to Winsdom. Washburn will play Central Aroostook. Defending champs Penobscot Valley host Madawaska. And finally, for eight-player soccer, Hodgden will host Woodland. George Stevens welcomes Katahdin. Dexter and Sumner battle in Dexter. And Shedd will host Panquis. Moving on now, what a win it was for the Patriots. It is victory Monday, just the second of the season for Pats fans. New England taking down Aaron Rodgers and the Jets in thrilling fashion on Sunday. Things looked a little shaky for New England, leading 7-6 in the first half. Drake May scrambled for a big gain here towards the end of the half, but took this hit to the side of the helmet. He went out. He's in concussion protocol. In came Jacoby Brissett. Brissett, who struggled the first five games of the year, leading New England to two touchdown drives, including this one. This was a big play here. It's Vacation Booty with under two minutes to go in the fourth quarter to win the game, take down the rival Jets. Both he and Gerard Mayo saying it took a lot of resiliency, both as a team and individually. I've never really questioned the resilience of this team, and I'm not going to go back to those comments. What I will say is we have a room full of Guys with the mentality that, you know, you got to change the page every day. Every day is a new day, and we have to get better and understand that practice is the most important thing we do until we get to the, to the game. So. I think this is a testament to me believing in myself uh, and not y'all. You no, know, it was, um, you know, it's sweet. I mean, I, you can't put it into words, but, um, you know, I'm not trying to, like, be arrogant or nothing, but I'm very proud of myself today. And the Pats traded linebacker Josh Uche to the Chiefs for a six-round pick. Finally, to some basketball now. We're a week away from the college season starting and the Maine Celtics tipping off their training camp earlier on Monday. The Celtics will have some new faces this season and some familiar ones, including guard J.D. Davison, who is back in Portland. Same with sharpshooting guard Drew Peterson, who had a great year last season. The Celtics came within a game of their first ever G League championship a year ago, but they also have a new head coach, Tyler Lashbrook. He most recently worked in Boston as a player development coach with the Celtics, and now the Kentucky native is excited to spend the season here in Maine. Day one was great. I, the, the energy was great. Um, we went. It was pretty cool. Last, yesterday we went to uh, out on the out on the boat and caught some lobsters. There's a specialness about this place. I think the guys feel it, and they feel it when they're in here, and they feel it when they're in the community. So. The Celtics open play next Friday, November 8th in Long Island. That is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. An illegal immigrant ran an Albion mother off the road and killed her. How did we get here? Before Biden opened the border, Jared Golden voted to protect sanctuary cities. 
gave welfare to illegal immigrants, voted to allow those benefits to be spent on liquor and bail. Jared Golden created an immigration crisis in Maine, made it worse in Washington. And this is the cost. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. I drive more running for Congress than I used to. I've been all around the state. You meet a lot of great people. They talk a lot about higher costs, skyrocketing electric bills, and rising inflation. And heating oil tanks need to be filled soon. People are struggling. We need to lower inflation and the cost of fuel and bring balance to Washington. I'm Austin Terrio, and I approve this message. People over politics. Austin Terrio for Congress. While thrill seekers embrace the spookiness of Halloween, doctors say you want to avoid real life scares that can end in a trip to the emergency room or worse. One way to stay safe while trick or treating is to be vigilant about the vehicles around you. Fox's Ted Linder reports. Well, there's plenty to fear on Halloween night. <laughs> doctors say vehicles could be the most frightening thing for trick or treaters. Dubbing Halloween one of the deadliest days of the year for pedestrians, especially kids. Kids are running around, they're excited, they're full of uh, sugar, they sneak through cars, um, the day is getting shorter. Because streets are flooded with nighttime crowds, often as people are driving home from work, neighborhoods can become chaotic for cars to drive through. It makes it all the more critical to instruct young kids about traffic safety. Always cross on the crosswalks, teach the kids to not cross in the middle of the street, to look both sides, to wait. Uh, if they see a car approaching, to wait to make eye contact. Arming trick-or-treaters with flashlights, placing reflective tape on costumes, and wearing glow sticks or shiny outfits can help boost your visibility in the dark. But still, be mindful about the fit of your costumes. Make sure that they're not too baggy where the kid can trip. Um, also, that they're, the masks, uh, they are not too tight or too dark or with narrow holes to see through because kids will not be able to breathe well, will not be able to see well the, the, the cars come in or going. Meanwhile, doctors say there can be safety in numbers, recommending young kids go out with adult supervision and older teenagers travel with a group of friends. We don't want to remember the uh, ER or Halloween to be in the ER. So this, this time of the year, just be mindful. Ted Lindner, Fox News. And there's some good news for trick-or-treaters this year. I know some years where I used to take my daughters, we'd have to bundle them up in winter coats, which kind of covered up their costumes, which they didn't want to do, but it was so cold out. Looks like Thursday is going to be a wonderful day. Temperatures up into the mid-70s, and it should not be pretty warm that night too. Yeah. You probably still need a slicker, but right. you know, who knows? Right. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Tuesday. A small crowd advisory is up until 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon along the coast as active surf will be expected to move in yet again. For now, it's rather calm out there in the ocean. One foot wave heights being reported according toward the buoys at this time. A little bit active further out towards sea around two to six foot wave heights being reported in those areas. Meanwhile, on land, not looking too bad. We're under a party cloudy sky this morning. A little bit more active weather developing further off towards the west. We have showers and storms in lower Michigan and some active weather in Canada as well. well. We'll have our turn for some rain coming up later on tonight. So future cast showing that part the cloudy sky that will be on the way for us today. And later on tonight, more clouds move in. The rain gets going after midnight. Early Wednesday morning, we'll be watching for showers that will be passing through, continuing throughout the day on Wednesday. Notice by Wednesday night, things do back off. Then once we head towards your Thursday, not looking too bad. Maybe some fog to watch out for and maybe some clouds as we head towards Thursday morning. As for the rainfall, I'm going to stop this by early Thursday morning. Not a whole lot of rain expected, maybe around a tenth of an inch of rain possible before we're all finished up. And then later on this week, a little bit more on the way. So overall this week, maybe around a quarter to a half an inch of rain possible. We'll take any rain that we can get as it's been dry lately around here with moderate drought developing across our neck of the woods. And it's not just us as well. Further off towards the west, look at this. Most of the country dealing with some kind of drought right now. We could use the precipitation 
precipitation, at least for us, we'll get a little bit moving in coming up soon. Our average night temperature is 53 degrees. We'll do lower 50s today, middle 50s Wednesday, middle 70s. Hello, as we had towards your Thursday, upper 60s for your Friday. Then we cool off. We got 40s Saturday and 50s Sunday and again for your Monday. So for today, lower 50s under a party county sky and at South breeze getting up to about five miles per hour or so. Later on tonight, upper 30s rain likely areas of dense fog also expected and at South breeze at about five to 10 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, we have middle 50s for the high temperature. Some rain showers on the way. Also breezy and at South wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast all decked out for Halloween coming up soon, showing a party county sky and rather warm for Halloween with highs in the mid 70s. Some more rain showers Friday with highs in the upper 60s and then we cool off upper 40s for Saturday under a mostly sunny sky. There is a store that is all about toys, where you will find that special and unique toy at Out on a Whimsy, Maine's largest toy store. A magical toy wonderland filled with fun and imagination for every child. Now with three locations, Belfast, Bangor, and Blue Hill. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message. I think Austin Terrio can be very dangerous. He most definitely would join the extremists in Congress. Austin Terrio is on the same side as the extremists who want to have a national abortion ban. It's extremists that don't allow women to have choice. And these extremists, they're going to try to control women. It's wrong. I think you're going to see women die. I just don't want that for my grandchildren. Austin Terrio, he's not going to stand up for my rights in Congress. What do I like about Joe Baldacci? Well, the man's Italian, first off, so what's not to like? But more importantly, Joe is community focused and independently minded, and Joe gets things done, whether it's for seniors or young people or young families. He was named Legislator of the Year by the Maine Council on Aging for his work to protect seniors and their health care in many important ways. He represents Bangor and Herman well, because to Joe, everyone matters. Paid for and authorized by the Joe Baldacci for State Senate Committee, Eugene Sullivan, Treasurer. <music> Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Let's get this party started. It's Halloween on Dancing with the Stars. I'm gonna have nightmares about you tonight. <laughs> Okay. Halloween Nightmares on Dancing with the Stars, live tonight. The streets of Mexico burst with color on Sunday night as hundreds of skeletons adorned in flowers and traditional dress paraded on the capital's main boulevard as part of the Day of the Dead festivities. Mexicans painted and got dressed up as the iconic Mexican skeleton La Catrina for pre-day of the dead celebrations. The parade is one of the city's many events for the Day of the Dead, a pre-Hispanic tradition in which families remember their dead and celebrate the continuity of life. I'm Jared Golden and I approve this message. Washington wasn't listening to Maine. So we brought Maine to Washington to deliver the message. Together, we stood up to Biden to protect Maine lobstermen. Worked with the Trump administration to build a veteran treatment center. Delivered $1 million to train Maine loggers. And worked with Republicans to secure our border and fund our police. And we're just getting started. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reactions, and analysis of your favorite teams. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz is brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 30 locations, owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. Gun Sports and Brewer knows that for fun, exercise, and meeting new friends, nothing is better than ice skating. Whether it's sailing down the ice, making a great pass, and scoring in a game of hockey, or the great strength and expression of figure skating.
from the youngest child all the way to adulthood. Anyone can enjoy the fun of skating at Gun Sports. We supply the equipment for your skating fun for great prices, the proper fit, and service after the sale. Shop your locally owned Gun Sports Shop, Greenpoint Road in Brewer. Welcome to 207 Collectibles, your ultimate destination for all things collectible and gaming, where every dream comes true and a little magic is always in stock. Whether you're looking for vintage video consoles or games, Pokemon, D&D, Magic Cards, NASCAR collectibles, board games, or even Funkos, we've got it all. Come visit 207 Collectibles. Your collection is our passion. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. From the Great North Woods to the Rock Mount Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, 400 wildfires have already burned 200 acres of Maine this year, and experts say that risk is increasing. Plus, with the election right around the corner, many Mainers have not received their mail-in ballots, and some are starting to worry. And Ellsworth is exploring paid parking, which is quickly becoming a contentious issue in the area. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories and much more coming up, including the, a report on an artist who's using old fishing line to make beautiful works of art. You'll have to check that out. But first, to check out that forecast, and if you go outside this morning, you can tell that the change of season is really upon us. Things cooling down even more down into the teens this morning. But don't worry, later on this week, we'll have a day that's really going to be like a